Hi, my name is Nick Fennell and I'm going to walk through another VCSP how-to video. This one is around the Veeam Cloud Connect tenant management. So just to be clear, we have two views, two roles, one platform. Cloud Connect server is what you typically see as your installation inside a Windows platform and where you would initially put the license keys. From there, you can manage and design your infrastructure, add your repositories, add your Cloud Connect gateways and various other components, just as you would with a traditional VBR server install. The Cloud Connect console is a free web GUI and this adds and enhances the features that are found in the Cloud Connect server, but should be seen as the way to manage and manipulate tenants and organizations going forwards. There are more features in there, such as monitoring and management, and also license key manipulation. In this video, I just want to cover what is a tenant. Well, it's a set of credentials, but more importantly, it's a link back to the customer site and that organization who are using you as a service provider to provide back as a service, DR as a service, or managed services. Managed services will be where you are interacting and managing that platform for them. From a concept point of view, that tenant, that user is actually created inside the Veeam service provider console. This provides a powerful wizard to help you create the companies, assign the cloud components that they're allowed to consume and many, many more features. You do also see those users, those tenants created in the Veeam Cloud Connect server. Some features that you may want to implement are available only in this view. Unfortunately, when you install Veeam Service Provider Console version 5, these features are disabled by default on the Cloud Connect server. These can easily be changed. I'm going to walk through these steps in the demo lab. In order to manage tenants using the Veeam Cloud Connect server, we first need to launch the console. And then we would move to Cloud Connect. And then we'd look at tenants. If you right click, you can add a tenant here and the various sets of tenants you can add. But you need to be aware, if you have Veeam Cloud Service Provider Console, you may be presented with this message. So first, I'll show you how to make this change. Log into Service Provider Console version five, go to configuration, and then choose Cloud Connect servers on the left hand side. You can then see any Veeam Cloud Connect servers that you've added into this console. You can choose to take them, change the management using this enable button, or you can right click and choose the tenant management from here. But by default, when you add a Cloud Connect server into the console, this restriction is on by default and is now recommended. This limits operations such as managing tenants and subtenant accounts from the console itself and that means that you need to run everything through the service provider console. For the benefits of this demonstration, we'll enable it, we'll agree to this message, and then we'll go back to the service provider console. Now that we've made that change, we now have the option to create one of our three tenant accounts, a standalone account, Active Directory, or vCloud Director integration. In this example, we'll walk through a standard tenant account. We'll create a username. We'll give it a password. And we can choose to add backup as a service, services, or DR as a service, services. As you can see, this extends 
menus on the left hand side. You can also choose whether the contract never expires or has a particular date that you wish to choose. As we walk through this wizard, you can see this is very similar to the settings you have on the Cloud Connect console. You can change the number of tasks, the bandwidth limits if you need to, and also if gateway pools have been deployed. You can add the cloud repositories. This will be where the backups are going to be stored. Choose from the published targets. Give the user a quota and assign that to the user. Notice we have an option here to keep deleted backup files. This is Veeam's insider protection. I'll be covered in another session. If you're offering DR as a service, a replication into Cloud Connect, then this is where you would add the hardware plans. You would also add a network extension appliance. All we're going to do now is just add these basic settings. And then we can finish this demo. Other types of tenant you can create would be the Active Directory account or the vCloud Director integration. The service provider does not need to configure cloud resources or hardware plans as the VCD organization already has CPU, RAM, storage and network resources attached. This tenant can then access those resources and leverage that as an off-site DR location. In this next section, I want to talk more about how a service provider can actually interact and assist in an end-user environment. So we've all seen this diagram before. I showed it earlier. It's a very simple view of the service provider and a tenant infrastructure. So one of the options we can do is to add remote console. So why would we do this? It allows a service provider to be able to access the Veeam services and the Veeam jobs that are running at the remote site to help manage, to troubleshoot and to configure. So with this feature, the service provider connects to the tenant backup server logs into the Veeam backup and replication deployed at that site and in many ways is similar to the regular Veeam backup replication console that's running on premises. This is done by a client side component. To connect to the tenant backup server, the service provider needs to specify some settings. The name or IP address of the service provider backup server or cloud gateway credentials to connect to the service provider backup server and credentials to connect the tenant backup server. There are some limitations with this connection method and these are documented in the user guide. Essentially, both versions of VBR console need to be the same at both ends. Plus, the service provider cannot perform the following operations. File level restore, application item restore with the Veeam Explorer, or file copy operation using the files view. The next option, which gives us much more control of that tenant, is firing up a remote desktop session. So with this, the service provider can use full functionality to connect the tenant backup server. At this point, they're accessing the machine itself, the operating system. They can launch Veeam console natively, and also if they need to perform other operations within that tenant, this could be an ideal opportunity to access and explore that environment. So this is all wrapped up in the managed service that a service provider can offer to customers. 
All communication with this remote desktop is tunneled cleverly through the Cloud Connect gateway, so it's nice and secure. We'll walk through this on the demo environment. As well as being able to create tenant accounts on the Veeam Service Provider console, we can also do other functions such as remote management. If we right click on the hues that we have created, it already has a connection to a tenant VBR server. We can see we can do a remote console for VBR, or we can actually do a remote desktop for the same server. Let's choose the first option. We'll choose the correct tenant. Then we'll add the correct username and password to access the remote tenant. We'll enter those details and then hit connect. These will be verified with a remote server. And then what we should see is the console will pop up on this screen so we can manage and remotely see what's happening at the tenant server. And there you go. As you can see, we're at the remote site. There are no jobs running. You can see the connectivity we set up just a few moments ago on a different section. Come out of that window, back to the service provider. Now we can go to this same tenant account and go to remote desktop, choose the same tenant server and now provide the RDP details to connect to that server. Just take a moment and verify these credentials. And as you can see, we now have full remote desktop of the tenant server. Where we can make changes or we can run the Veeam console if that's what we require.